Hello, Scorpio. Mars is in conjunct Pluto on the 2nd, and on that same day there is a new moon in Sagittarius this month of June. Also on the 5th, Mars is sextile Jupiter. Now, right now, Mars is direct in Gemini until the 25th of June. And Pluto is currently retrograde in Capricorn. Been that way since April 16th of 2015. And Pluto is going to be retrograde in Capricorn until September 21st, excuse me, 24th, where it, September 24th, when it goes direct in Capricorn 2015. So that's going to cause you to have some, again, backward thinking or meaning that you're going to want to pay attention to things that happened in the past and ruminate on things that happened in the past. So we're going to take a look at that. It's going to be, you know, quite a month because we have a a summer solstice in the northern hemisphere on the 21st. And in the southern hemisphere, we have a winter solstice again on the 21st of June. So quite a month ahead this month, Scorpio. Now let's see how your ruling planets of Mars and Pluto are going to affect you this month, Scorpio. I'm Pastor Rosemary, the Astrology Angel. Thank you for joining us. This is an angelic horoscope transmission from your Scorpio angel, Barchiel, who resides over your fixed water nature, and these are his messages for you in love, money, and health. First, the most important, the love transmission. In the love transmission, your guardian angel in general is Gabriel, the mighty archangel Gabriel, who rules over all the water signs. And if we attenuate it and focus it on you, Scorpio, then Barchiel is your teaching angel specific to you, your zodiac angel, if you will. Okay, so what, how is this month going to affect you? Well, with the new moon on the 16th and the full moon on the 2nd, the full moon on the 2nd in Sagittarius is going to cause you to have an increased psychic ability. Your psychic powers are going to increase. Your ESP, your ability to perceive things that you couldn't before. You're going to be seeing things, not in a hallucinatory manner where it's you're, you're crazy, but in a way where you can see on a new level. And actually, people who think they're crazy, if they just understand that their right brain is talking to their left brain, as it says in uh, the Origins of Consciousness and the Bicameral Mind by Julian James, then they will understand that it's simply the right brain talking to the left brain, and people won't actually be crazy. They'll understand that it's a certain way of perceiving. And they, they can have a clarity and not feel that they're insane. Because if you think that it's the outside world dealing with you, that's what causes people to go nuts. But if you understand that these things are inward and they're inner messages, then there's no, uh, there's no problem with understanding what's, differentiating what's going on outside of you and what's going on inside of you. And in reality, there is no difference between what is within and what is without. But still, as long as you know it's all taking place on the inside, everything else on the outside becomes very sane and very lucid. So just understand that. Now, how's this new moon on the 16th in Gemini going to affect you, Scorpio? What it's going to do is it's going to cause others to try to persuade you. And that's not going to be so easy for them, actually. It's going to be easy for other signs. But for water signs, and you in particular, it's going to be very difficult for other people to persuade you to their way of thinking. Because, Scorpio, you do things when you feel like it. You don't do things when other people tell you to. When other people try to get you to do things, you're not interested. So if if people want to get you know you to pay attention to them, they're going to have to just sort of ignore you or push you away, and then you come back. <laughs> that's that's because you're fixed water. And you have, you know, a tidal action, you know, a sort of a wave-like action. So you understand, you know, the tide goes in, the tide goes out. If people have to just sort of be able to go with nature. Now, Mars being in Gemini until the 25th of June, it's going to make a lot of overheated thinking, a lot of excitable thinking in you. 
So one, and, and also in Aries and the Pluto aspect, because they're ruled by Mars too, but Pluto is, since it's retrograde in Capricorn from April 16th of 2015, it already happened until, uh, September 24th of 2015. Because of this aspect, uh, you're, you're, again, the perception of old fashioned laws and the getting into old fashioned laws and then finding out what happened in the past and just be a little wary of feelings of retribution because too much of that, uh, causes too much. And with this, with this Mars and Gemini, you don't want to have an overheated combative situation. What you want to do is be able to sort of find where everybody can understand how somebody else may feel. Because people tend to think that they want to do whatever they can get away with. All creatures do that. So people need to understand that once someone is, has, has the uh, laws taken off them, they're going to go right back to their old behavior and they're going to be worse. Because if there were no, uh, laws, there would be no criminals, right? If there were no, if there were no warriors, there would be no war. And this is obvious. So we have to understand how these things work. These things create our reality. And there's a lot of laws on the books. Okay, now, how is this going to affect your money? Bartschel's money transmission for you, Scorpio. How is this going to affect your money? Where's the money going to come from? Money, of course, comes from uh, God. It's a gift from God. And God plays with money, kind of dangles it in front of you, so that you will chase a certain aspect of God, a certain facet of God, so that you eventually begin to appreciate the giver rather than the gift, or appreciate the giver in a, in a more abundant way. Of course, you appreciate the gift, but you appreciate the giver more. It's like God wants you to appreciate him. So he, he kind of plays hide-and-seek with the money, he kind of dangles it in front of you. You understand. So just, just, it's not important where the money is going to come from. The money comes from God. What's important is understanding that if you wake up every day and you are already thankful, that the money is something you don't have to worry about. Because everything just sort of shows up. It's, well, money doesn't grow on trees. Oh, yes, it does. Cash grows on the cash tree. It's a, it, there, I believe it's a Chinese tree. <laughs> Or Chinese word, it's the cash tree. And money does grow on trees and, you know, frozen orange juice and all of that. You know, you gotta grow the oranges on the tree and pick them and make it into orange juice. And yes, it does grow on trees. It literally grows on trees. So don't worry so much about it. Because if you notice, you know, uh, if you take away all the trees that grow and bear fruit in a neighborhood, then those people have to go out and buy those foodstuffs, do they not? So it's about wanting to control food because food is what everybody wants to control to control people and various types because, you know, then we, we get down to the survival root chakra, which leads us into our health transmission from Bartrell, who wants to let you understand that your root chakra needs to be grounded in you. And by grounding your root chakra into the earth, going roots deep down into the earth and calming the self, this uh, Mars in conjunct Pluto, with Pluto being retrograde in Capricorn, will be helpful because you won't get anxious and you won't end up having uh, head injuries or injuries about the face. What you'll end up having is uh, very good ideas. So you can turn a, something that may be over the top into something that is actually beneficial for you. And all you have to do is, again, not let the anxiety get to you and center yourself and you'll do just fine. And you can help teach others these techniques and, 
Remember, if you make other people feel good about themselves, they're going to like you. If you make other people feel bad about themselves, they're not going to like you. So it's very simple. Just people are in, are not really interested so much in what you can do for them. They care about that, of course. but And, and they're happy if you're on their side. But what they really want is to know uh, from you how great they are, really. People want to be told how great they are. <laughs> so uh, you understand this, Scorpio. And Scorpio is uh, has often been called the most powerful sign in the Zodiac because your divine tone is, I create. So as long as you remember that other people, you know, need to be uh, maybe bolstered, their, their self-esteem needs to be bolstered. And as long as you do that, you bolster their self-esteem, make them feel safe, they're going to they're gonna like you, they're going to care about you. And it, it's not necessary to, I know it's fun, like some of these uh, television shows, for example, where they drop people on an island and they have to survive. Those are fun, but, you know, that's great, but don't make people do that if they don't want to. Some people like that, some people don't. So make sure you give people what they want, not what you want. Give people what they want, and you'll do very well. And there's, cause there's always going to be people who want what you want, and you can give that to them. You understand? Okay, now, to go over some of the planetary aspects. Oh, one more thing. Before we leave the health transmission uh, from Bart Shiel, he wants us to remind you that as you do these uh, sort of first and second chakra cleansings and healings, which will be a lot of energy this month. You don't want to overstimulate, okay? But it's very it's very centering. And what you want to do is understand that chakra work can be very uh, healing, but it can also be dangerous because you don't want to overstimulate with too much yang or too, you know, too much yin, depending on whether you're in the north or southern hemispheres. That's why you got to get your astro cartography done. Because if you don't, you're, you could be really barking up the wrong tree. So what you need to understand is that you want to go to a Qigong master or you want to speak to a Qi master, an acupuncturist, a licensed acupuncturist, a licensed chiropractor. Chinese chiropractors are great. Licensed Chinese chiropractors. You might want to deal with a naturopathic physician or an homeopathic physician or any allopathic physician that also knows how to deal with some of these alternative and healing modalities because chi work can be dangerous. So you want to make sure you're dealing with someone who has a lot of experience and has some kind of certification in this kind of work. Either some kind of yoga instructor or some kind of qigong masters are the best because you're going to want to really ground this month. And grow those roots into the ground. Okay. Now, for the facets, the afterglow, the planetary aspects for Scorpio this month that you might want to pay attention to. Remember, there is a summer solstice in the northern hemisphere and a winter solstice in the summer hemisphere on the 21st of June. Other than that, on the 2nd, we have a Mars in conjunct Pluto, in conjunct. On the 2nd, also a full moon in Sagittarius. On the 5th, we have a Mars sextile Jupiter. On the 9th, a Mars sextile Uranus. On the 14th, Sun conjunct Mars. On the 14th, Mars sextile Cora. On the, be, be careful around the 14th of extreme behavior with this Mars sextile Cora. On the 16th, new moon in Gemini. People try to persuade you, not a problem for you, Scorpio. You'll end up persuading them. But you might want to be persuaded to some more positive ways of thinking, so you'll allow for that because you want to. On 23rd, Mars in conjunct Saturn. On the 24th, Mars will ingress into the sign of Cancer, the crab. That's on 24th. Okay, Pluto, remember that Pluto is currently retrograde in Capricorn until September 24th of 2015. Been that way since April 16th of 2015. On the second, Mars in conjunct Pluto. That could be a little difficult. And with that, also, the second is the full moon in Sagittarius. There's a lot going on. So you might want to really, if you can't center yourself, you might want to do a getaway for three days or something. The second full moon in Sagittarius again on the same day as the Mars 
in conjunct Pluto and the Pluto retrograde on the fifth Sun in conjunct Pluto. That might make it a little difficult between you and your Leo buddies. On the 15th, Saturn ingress into uh, Scorpio. Uh, we're telling you that because this will affect laws. If you want to pay attention to why people are getting so into uh, arcane laws, that could be why. Now, on the 16th, new moon in Gemini. On the 20, and that's also on the 16th. Um, what you want to be careful of is, again, who's going to persuade who? That's because there, there's a, a tendency to want to dominate another person because that makes people feel good. So what you want to do is if you don't feel like you can dominate someone because they just won't give in, what you do is you have to tell them good things about themselves, not bad things. There's a, here, here's what people are not understanding. Nobody wants to hear bad things about themselves. People want to hear good things about themselves. So you'll do much better if you build, you don't have to put yourself down, build yourself up, but also tell other people good things about themselves. That's all. And you'll find that life and business is a lot better. On the 21st, Venus in conjunct Pluto. Again, that's the uh, summer solstice in the northern and in the southern winter solstice, and the 28th Mercury in conjunct Pluto. Some difficult aspects, not too bad, but, you know, it could be sort of a a month where you feel there's a lot going on and things are a little bit hard. But they're, they're just hard enough to make it interesting, and some of the martial aspects might make it a little overheated. So what you want to do is do a lot of calming, soothing meditations and have nice, lovely, calming, soothing beverages, you know, that are, that are healing to the body and cleansing and cleanse out toxicity. You want to sort of in a healthy way and in not too, uh, not too hectic of a way and not too stern of a way. You want to cool and soothe this month. And that'll help you in, in your emotions, in your finances, and in your health. And you'll do very well. Okay, Scorpio. This is an angelic horoscope transmission from Barchiel. I'm Pastor Rosemary, the Astrology Angel, and we will see you next month.